Here we see some nice head lifting and extension through the thoracic spine. Marty's hips and knees are moving out of the flexed position into an extended adducted position, shifting his weight posteriorly toward the pelvis area. This frees his upper body so he can lift his head and upper trunk off the support surface. We can also see little weight shifts from right to left, which he's able to counteract with his abdominals to balance himself, all the while increasing his shoulder girdle strength and changing the sensory input on his arms. As his legs progress out of the flexed newborn position, he is able to lift his trunk and begin using his vision to fix on something in the distance. At this age, you should not expect the elbows to be in line with the shoulders, and he will not yet be reaching for toys. We see that Owen has a much more newborn looking posture, which shifts the weight forward towards the head and shoulder area, making it more difficult for him to lift his head up. He has much more hip and knee flexion than Marty. Once the hips are extended, he will be able to start to lift his head up a little more. It's important to note how changes in the leg position allow the infant to begin developing head and trunk control in the prone position. If Owen does not independently progress to the more extended and abducted legs, he'll be stuck in this position, unable to lift up his head and push up on his arms. His strategy to get any movement is to extend and push up on his legs, which is a non-productive strategy because it doesn't assist him in lifting his head and pushing up on his arms against gravity. When the examiner uses a rattle, Owen gets quiet and listens. But because lifting and turning his head is so difficult when his hips are flexed under him, he is unable to find the auditory stimuli even though he hears it.